Good morning, gladiators. We who are about to play salute you. This morning we have a very special game for you. Of course it's special. It's a sword and sandals game. And in fact, it is probably the most beloved of all the sword and sandals games. The classic sword and sandals 2 Emperor's Reign. Um, let's just get into it. Swords and sandals, gladiator. Gotta sing, right? Um, Sword and Sandals 2 has uh, quite an interesting history because it is in fact really basically an enhanced version of Sword and Sandals 1. For all intents and purposes the engine is the same, most of the graphics are the same, um, the gameplay has been uh, really enhanced and expanded but um, you're basically playing the version of Sword and Sandals that I'd hoped to make in the beginning. Uh, but didn't have the resources for all the time. And it, it was one of those things that we just wanted to see if the first one would be a success. And then if it was, we'd uh, invest some more time in it. Um, Emperor's Reign, of course, refers to Emperor Antares, who is the uh, main antagonist in the series and um, the villain. Um, I actually got the idea for Antares uh, from uh, Gladiator, which most of the ideas of Sword and Sandals came from, you know, Gladiator and He-Man and other bits of influence, but a lot of the um, constraints of the game are based on Gladiator and, and the Emperor Commodus who fought Maximus, and I thought, oh, what a cool idea to have an Emperor fighting. Um, at the time I was making this game, I didn't really have that much of a backstory for him, like he wasn't this undead lich lord uh, hell-bent on destroying Brand or anything, Brandor. Uh, that was retroactively added. All right, let's let's um, let's get stuck in. You must create a gladiator before journeying onward. All right, uh, let's call this one Maximus. Um, back then also, I, I didn't really have um, an idea of all the different races. Um, they had different colors and some weird little face ticks like uh, weird ears or um, pig nose. But um, for example, uh, they weren't sort of, you know, Guntarians or Cycladians like this one guy was because uh, the world existed in my head, but I hadn't really tied it to the game that much. Um, this was, you know, probably wasn't even set in Brandor at the time, you know, uh, that was all to come later. Um, this devil guy was kind of cool. Let's give him a huge beard and a blue beard. That sounds good. Uh, again, I usually like to, um, Pump in points of strength, attack, and defense. Maybe not agility and stamina and vitality. Yeah, I tend to not really bother with magic, although magic uh, is very powerful, and a lot of people do like that um, route. Uh, the introduction to the game: Enslaved, Maximus, Maximus. Yes, that was your name. But it seems an eternity since everyone has called you that. And now here you are, languishing in the darkness forgotten prisoner in the Emperor's dungeon. A door opens. Your eyes are blinded by the light. Dark shapes appear before you. Soldiers? Hey! Get up, you worm! In tones of voice. It is time! You were herded from your cell into an underground arena with several other prisoners. Including a fearful prisoner. A massive guard and dark shoulders. Ah, blah, blah. Yeah. Those who survive will become gladiators, he says, handing each of you a rusty knife. There is no alternative. And so, in a friendly of blood and with a stench of fear, your days as a gladiator begin. So, uh, you really want to be a quick reader um, because obviously my narration wasn't quick enough to keep up. Uh, now, the first thing you notice about Swords and Sandals 2 is it has a, uh, a new um, pre fight introduction. Um, this is a bit more sort of uh, WWE style uh, wrestling. Um, you know, showing the two or a boxing match and that kind of thing. You can roll over the opponent's stats, get a bit of trivia. It's by and large the same trivia random generator from the first game, but special characters like the bosses um, and the fearful prisoner have their own um, unique trivia like this particular one. This poor soul has been rotting in the dungeon for over 20 years. He lost his will to live long ago and should prove no match for you. Um, a lot of people ask me, is the fearful prisoner... Um, <coughs> Uh, what's his backstory and so far he still doesn't have one he's just an unlucky guy who just was in the wrong place at the wrong time got stuck in the arena and this really is just a tutorial of the game it allows you to kind of try out the keys um, you know not be in, uh, in fear of your life 
because um, all the fearful prisoner can really do is uh, move forward. I don't think he can attack you, or if he does, he um, is a hundred percent chance of him missing. So let's do a quick attack on him. Wow, brutal! He ripped out his heart. A gift from the emperor to start you on your way. You receive two thousand five hundred gold, and you level up. So uh, essentially, that is really a tutorial fight. Uh, in future games, of course, Sword and Sandals 3, uh, the Fearful Prisoner actually becomes the first arena boss. He becomes a powerful wizard. Well, not that powerful because he, you know, he gets killed in the first arena fight. Um, same uh, leveling up as the past game. Uh, I think you get more skill points in this. I'm not 100% sure, but let's keep pumpy nose in. I, I'm not a big fan of the charisma thing. I mean, a lot of people find it hilarious, that raw and all that sort of stuff. And it is funny, but I find that a boring way to fight. Okay, um, so now we're in the town of Doomtrek. Uh, the name Doomtrek, this, uh, again, made up name like everything. Um, it's pretty much as it sounds. Uh, I, I thought of prisoners who were doomed, um, trekking towards the arena, um, shuffling their feet in the sand and so on. Um, nothing to do with Star Trek or anything like that. It's literally... Um, I, I wanted to call the arena the Arena of Doom, but I think that was probably taken by something else, so it ended up being Doom Trek. Um, the background is new. The arena background is also new. Um, it looks a little funny because I think that might have been some stock art of an arena that we bought. Uh, the, the hills were drawn by my friend Tony Lowe, who did some of the art for various Sword and Sandals games. Uh, these still have the strain, the same strange perspe uh, perspectives because they were 3D models that I drew over in cartoon form. Um, but I think I cleaned them up a bit more for this one. And there's also a day and night cycle, which you'll notice the sun rising and setting. Um, at some point, we'll probably get to the nighttime section and we can um, see a little adventure. There are two new shops in the game, the magic shop and the church. Um, for, for now, let's grab ourselves a weapon. Um, once again, Louis de Loungeville. Um, Oh, we don't have the agility for long swords because in this game the stats mean something. Um, I think strength-based weapons are clubs. Now let's get a blackjack, which is a small weapon for um, that thugs like to use for bashing people over the head. Uh, this gets um, there's, there's new things like charisma discounts and um, trade-ins and that kind of thing, and you can enhance all your weapons. So um, oh, it's starting to get afternoon. So every time you go to a shop, some time passes. Uh, the same golden shield armory uh, with um, Targan, aka Hulk Hogan. Um, let's get ourselves a breastplate. Oh gosh, 3,000 gold, you can't afford that. Can we afford a helmet? No, this is outrageous. The prices are way more expensive in this version. What about some boots? Yeah, yeah, we get some brigand boots. Boots are cheap and they also give you little bonuses like movement speed and that kind of thing. All right. We'll come back to the other shops later. But we've got boots and a blackjack. Really well prepared to fight. Uh, you can see the lights coming on at night, which is kind of cool. Um, I always like that. It sort of creates a bit of a warm feeling. Arglax, overlord of the arena. Uh, Arglax, of course, um, is one of the antagonists in Swords and Sandals Crusader, um, part of the Beast Force, who uh, rise up from the um, jungle south of uh, Taj Brandir and the Takash Desert and um, rise up and cause a lot of trouble in the Crusades, which was the game made after this. And of course, um, I'm making Sword and Sandals Pirates right now and Arglax is uh, one of the characters who feature and so you'll learn a bit more about him. Um, we've got tournaments and duels, which is kind of cool. Um, that's new. Let's start off with, we can't go to the tournament yet. Let's get a duel against Fenris Mercury. Sounds a bit like Freddie Mercury. Uh, we're fighting in the dungeon. I think the first fights uh, you can either fight in the arena or the dungeon, and then later on, bigger arenas come to you. Uh, the shadows are new, which is kind of cool. Rah, there's that classic taunt. He's blocking. Uh, the crowd also um, affects how much gold you get. These first fights are really easy. I think I actually rigged them very heavily in the player's favor until you get to the first tournament, just to get you, you know, used to the game and, and, and allow you to feel good about yourself before you die. You've gained a new ability. Win the crowd allows you to gain more gold from fights by entertaining the crowd. The more charisma you have, the more effective it is. Alright. Um, those who 
are fans of the movie Gladiator will also know Win the Crowd is something that Maximus says. Uh, actually, no, Proximo says it to Maximus. Um, win the crowd, win your freedom. Um, so a lot of the things in this kind of, you'll notice, pay homage to that great film. Uh, the Church. This sells as potions, uh, healing potions, so on. Now, we, you need magic for this, so this is probably never going to happen. Um, and you can also save your character for you know, some money, which is kind of cheeky, really. A um, bit of a fun trivia fact for you. The background of the church was actually for a game that I made, which was a um, set in a beer hall where you kicked goals into a soccer net um, and there were people cheering and so on. And it church, it's got to look like a church anyway. So I used that background and brought it into this one. The other game uh, wasn't very popular and, and never had many downloads. So um, no one really knew the difference, knew the difference. All right, let's get out of here. Ah, he's not happy. Silly fat fryer. Here are the uh, adventures that happen at the end of every day. Um, they're like really, really simple children adventures, and I really love making them. I actually reuse a lot of these in future games and made them a bit more um, detailed. Nightfall. The hour is late and the town quiet, and you find yourself growing weary. Will you brave the streets or spend some gold finding a tavern to rest for the night? Uh, yeah, let's get the tavern. We don't want to be robbed because you usually get robbed. It always happens. You'll make your way to the cozy nook, a tavern in the merchant's quarter. Blah, 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 blah. Your sleep is peaceful. Day two. Uh, the, that chapter title changes as you level up. Can we afford any more armor? Because that's a bit pathetic. Uh, peasant shoulder guards. Yeah, we can get them. All right. There's lots of bits of armor in this game, and it's kind of cool. You can sort of um, assemble your own um, sort of look and feel based on what you want to spend money on. It's kind of funny though that you know you'd wear you'd wear shoulder things, but no chest plate, even though they're just basically you know bits of a shirt. All right, we're fighting Palamedes. Uh, the good thing about sword and sandals too is it starts off very simple, much like sword and sandals one, but um, you get a lot more abilities. You get the ability to you know um, build up um, three pronged attacks where you know the third one allows you to slice the enemy's head off. There is really powerful magic spells, and um, let's get back in. Things allow you to teleport and you know blast your enemy from a distance. This is Angus. And Angus is another red-skinned fellow like ourselves, but he's better armed and uh, not quite as vi uh, robust as, as us. Doesn't have as much vitality. Uh, the way I fight is quite simple. You know, I just I charge, get in there, and then use the first three. This doesn't work against a lot of characters. There are certain uh, ranged things like the evil ninja who don't appreciate that, and they'll jump away from you, and you have to have some agility to chase after them or a ranged ability. Otherwise, you just get cut down. You've leveled up. Gladiator. It's uh, very easy to level up in the early Gladiator. game, and that's kind of fun. Gladiator. It um, gets a bit grindy Gladiator. towards the later game. Um, I, I'm aware of that. Gladiator. Okay. But some people like the grind. You know, it's quite relaxing. Weapons. Let's get a hammer. We can afford a hammer. Great. Now we're about to go into a tournament, so these are quite tough. Uh, there's no turning back. So before we go in, I'm just going to quickly show you the uh, magic shop. And here is a um, strange vampire lady. Uh, she doesn't have a name. I don't remember if I named her in future games, but I'll have to get back to you on that. Um, again, this was a 3D model um, that I made in um, a program called Bryce 3D. Uh, very simple um, modeling tool. Uh, and I basically created these bits of furniture and then I sort of um, just traced over them in Flash. So that's why it has that sort of quite strange look. And it's you know not really how I normally would draw, but you know, it suits the game. So you've got a bunch of spells like the teleport, the gale, um, swift sandals, um, things like fireball and lightning bolt are just devastating. But uh, you really got to um, commit yourself to the magica, um, the magica tool chain. All right, bloodlust, cool. That's really powerful, but we're not going to use that. Enchant weapon. So this is kind of a cool thing. You can um, 
enchant your weapon with the power of cold or flame or venom or even um, the wraith power which drains their opponent's life and um, I think it even gives you some health I can't remember if that's true uh, I have quite a clear memory of making this section because um, I was actually in Ireland at the time and um, for a couple of weeks and um, I just was on a laptop there and it was a freezing wintry day and I remember thinking I wonder if people will appreciate this uh, this section is it worth doing will have people had enough of sword and sandals after the first one will this enhancement be enough you know many game developers do go through that uh self-doubt and um believe me i still go through it now every time i make a game I, I feel like what's the point of adding this little thing this little bit of polish is is that going to be appreciated but um i feel like you know you can't add everything but if you can add little bits and pieces to give it some flavor to stand out from the most the more generic games um your game will be remembered by people which is great all right cool we're in the Woolridge's meat emporium cup uh john the but butcher Woolridge is a pillar of the community every year he hosts a tournament for low-level gladiators to gain valuable experience so uh there's three of us in this tournament and then oh four of us including john the butcher um i told this story in uh, another video but john the butcher was actually the name of uh, my first employer um, when I was about uh, probably 13 or 14 my mum got me a job at the local butchers uh, she went up there and said oh my son needs a job so uh, he very graciously said all right bring him along after work and um, we'll see what we can do so um, after school actually so after my um, day of uh, larking around at school I had to turn up at this butcher's shop and clean the uh, meat blocks and uh, sweep things up and get little bits of gristle out of the machines and it was you know pretty miserable job I didn't love it at all um, I only did it for um, one I might have even only had one session there and uh, eventually he said you know what you're a bit lazy you're not strong enough to move the block and you're a teenager and your attitude stinks so um he gave me uh 10 bucks and said see you later and at that time i was like how dare you i'm a very talented uh apprentice and um i was incensed and so i always vowed revenge and my revenge was of course to uh put him in the game as john the butcher and so people could slay his avatar for years and years to come so he's immortalized and he never found out he'd be very old now if he's still alive but um fun little story all right so we're level five slowly um oh actually i think we're now actually up to the arena champion so you get to hear the cool arena music which is that classic wwe rock theme it's just, uh, yeah, classic heavy metal and here is john the butcher um whose fascinating trivia fact is the song every time you go away you take a piece of meat with you was a huge hit for john the butcher several years ago several decades ago uh young people won't know that song but it was actually a hit song by a guy called paul young in the 80s and it was every time you go away you take a piece of me with you um and i said meat instead which is you know hilarious humor and you know kind of indicative of the stuff that I uh, find funny and I, I kind of chock full of my games all right so this guy's a bit tough and we really haven't oh he hits very hard he's got a magic axe as well you can see it's green glowing so we've been lucky I think we're gonna get him he hits hard but he's got low attack so Ooh, a couple of lucky hits in a row. Let's get a quick, couple of quick jabs. <laughs> Maximus defeats John the Butcher. Um, congratulations. So, yeah, you got a whole bunch of gold from Emperor Antares, who is, and that's the first real mention of him. Uh, I didn't do a really good job of um, explaining the Emperor in these um, first games. In the Redux series, of course, every chapter has... Um, a lot more text about um, the story and adds a, um, a motivation for you to be there and so on so if you haven't played the um, Redux series go check it out please because I spent ages on it <laughs> 
and you know obviously they, that they are good games i think you know they're uh different enough to the originals to warrant being made and um also pretty cool in their own right so let's speed this up a bit um get a good breastplate see if we can upgrade our weapon axe hand axe yeah mix it up a bit i think axe is better for critical hits which is really um good for ending battles fast all right move forward the opponents of course getting tougher but i don't think you can die in these um early uh in the duels you lose money but you don't die so you forget a lot of the stuff you know it's been so many years since i made it and i definitely changed things for the redux version and so this is probably not it's not a decade but it'd be getting up there since i really sat down and played this just as a, a fan rather than as um, um testing it or whatever so now we're getting a new into inventory slot so we could put um, uh, potions and things in there, but we're not going to do Let's get some more agility so we can start jumping around. And we got a helmet yet. Cover up with his ugly mug. Can't afford that one. Yeah, the brigand helmet. You know, it's funny going back and seeing this game. Um, it is simpler than the redux but you know a lot of things just feel right about it you know it's a classic flash game it's fast um it moves along quickly and it's something that i think in later versions sort of the sound i was like gotta be honest i think i lost a little bit of that and something that i want to bring back for uh, the inevitable swords and sandals 6 which i haven't even I've, i haven't started making it yet i haven't started but you know that will happen hopefully next year and I really want to learn from what I did right here and um, I think in future ones I just overcomplicated it and it slowed down a bit too much. Hey, I lost my first fight. You lose a bit of money and you'll live to see another day. So let's keep going. The sun is setting. Bigger crowd though, we're in a larger room now which is cool. Oh, one hit. Leonidas taken out. Poor Spartan. Back into the arena. You know, there's something cool about, you know, you you can just get straight into the fighting. Uh, you lose your five seconds away. Um, future versions of the game had a lot more screens to go through. And I think I fell in love with uh, narration and, I don't know, trying to make it a bit more cinematic. And um, it doesn't always work. And it, but it's important to learn from your mistakes and improve your games as you can and, and change as the audience's appetites change. So we're nearly up to level 7 and then we'll get to the next one. This guy didn't even bother bringing any armor other than some pantaloons in. How did he think he was going to win? No wonder his, his name was uh, Louis Nublet. Nublet by name, Nublet by nature. Oh cool. We've got the psych up ability. I wanted to show you this. This is a fun one. See if we can get another weapon before we hit the tournament. The hatchet. Yes, we'll grab that. And maybe we can enchant it. Uh the power of can we Yeah, oh we can't. No. Everyone's trying to rip you off in this game, aren't they? All right, into the tournament. The Midsummer Blades, uh, who will fight the evil ninja if we get that far. Who is a pain in the neck. In uh, the original Sword and Sandals 2, this one, the evil ninja, I think, is a guy. And in the Redux version, it's uh, a girl. And I uh, retro did it that sometimes it was actually a father and daughter combination and sometimes the father would compete and sometimes the daughter would compete and because they were in masks uh, no one ever knew right let's try the psych up ability see if you can get three three power hang on jump yeah stop kidding me one ah one one two oh you can get a grievous hit on them uh, sometimes it even slices the head off, which is pretty cool. The father of the four, no match. When you're fighting Maximus, you're just destined to lose. 
So the later tournaments actually get really uh, tough because you've got to win, you know, 10, 15, up to 20 fights in a row. Uh, and the guys are fighting are just beasts. Oh, off with his head. Zool the Bastard is next. He's got a nice sword though, so we've got to kind of steer clear of him. In future versions of the game as well, I um, actually added different uh, yells because they all sound the same at the moment. Alright, the Ewan Ninja, here we go. Classic. The evil ninja is one of the world's deadliest assassins. He is also a mean chess player and sings in the village choir. Oh, how delightful. Um, painful character because they'll attack you with a ranged weapon like the shuriken, which can actually do a lot of damage. Eventually, I think they've got a limited number of um, ranged weapons. So if you can get in close before they teleport away, uh, you've got a good chance of taking them out. Ah, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, so that's the magic power of the Gale, uh, which he uses to get you away and then uh, start slamming you with ranged weapons. But I think I think he might have run out of shurikens. I can't remember. So he's got a really good vertical leap, which I don't have. Oh, that's really annoying. Stop doing that. There's an ability you can get called um, Summon or something, which is basically like the Mortal Kombat's Get over here! And, uh, oh, how rude. Just do a little dance, that's kind of fun. I, did, I really haven't do much of that because it's a bit pointless. You win a bit of extra money, <laughs> disrespect your opponent. But the fun thing with that, kids love it. I mean, it's kind of fun to be able to fight in the battle. <laughs> there was actually a Gladiator game that came out on Steam earlier this year, and um, they were inspired by Sword and Sandals. Okay, I mean, I feel like they really ripped off a lot of it. Including, of course, the ability to fight in battle. So, you know, I guess, you know, imitation is the biggest form of flattery, but, you know, you're never going to beat the original. Sword and sandals, baby. Call away. Oh, he's lost his hat. I think he's about to go down. All right. Maximus defeats the evil ninja and wins the second tournament. Um... We'll leave it there for now because uh, that's about as much as uh, I have for now trivia wise on the game um, I hope you enjoyed it I mean I really had fun playing this game and um, this is the game that gets the most uh, videos made about on YouTube and the most feedback I ever get with people saying I love Sword and Sandals too I used to play it in school as a kid and you know aside from making me feel very old um, it really just it, it makes you feel great as a game to be able to hear stuff like that so if you like swords and sandals too um please let me know I, I i always love hearing about it um you can actually buy these classic games on uh egames.com uh who still sell the originals um they are of course my publisher and uh, have teamed up with me to do the um redux series and uh, a great bunch of guys and um, you can support them by buying the game from egames.com and there's a whole package of them if you want to get all of them and get your fix. For now, um, thanks for watching and uh, next time I'm going to have a non-sandals related, non-sword and sandals related game uh, to play for you. So that'll be a lot of fun. Cheers everybody. Bye.